My name is Miguel, and uh, my last name is Jarillo Pedraza, and I was born in Mexico City, and thanks to my parents, I was able to go to a private school where uh, many subjects were introduced to us, so one of them was English. We were in a wealthy state, and my parents decided that it was time to move to the U.S. because um, we were actually getting threats by criminals who just like to get money out of people. So my dad decided that when I was 10 years old and I came to the U.S. with a student, uh, actually with a visa, a tourist visa, and that's how I got to the United States. I moved to uh, Nampa, Idaho, and I started school there. And then I moved to Mount Home, Idaho, where my mom uh, and my uncle bought a restaurant. And uh, those, I think, that was like the worst years of my life. It was a pretty hard time in my life where I realized that in Mexico I had everything and I came to the USA expecting I was gonna have more and actually I had less and actually like even slept inside of a car. So one day I woke up and I was like, hey mom, you know, like I found the school and I really wanna go to it. I was there for two and a half years and that school taught me to have to be a leader, how, how just to keep moving forward with my life. It was one of the best decisions I've ever made so far in my life, I think. Um, going to that school uh, introduced me to dance, which is now my passion, which is my art that I do. Um, it's, just, it's just amazing what you can do with dance. It was just unbelievable. Like I couldn't believe that that was me, like walking across that stage with a diploma from high school. It was like a dream coming true, which now got me to where I am at Western Wyoming Community College. Okay, so tell me about your, the journey that you've gone through since you found out that you had cancer. It was August of 2012. I was getting ready to leave home to come to college, and it was fun. Like the first three weeks of college were so much fun. I loved it. But during that time, um, my nose started. My nose started bleeding a lot, and I was just like, "Well, they're just allergies, you know. That something. It's, the air here is different. My room's a little bit drier. Uh, I'm more, you know, in the desert part of the states. So I was just like, I'll be, I'll be okay if I start taking some um, medicine. But then, actually, um, the nosebleeds kept getting just worse. Like, there were like nonstop nosebleeds, and like, it was so, it was so gross because like. I could fill up pretty much like a sink, like halfway of a sink just with blood. So one day, my friend, um, her name is uh, Kitty Clarkard. She's a good friend of mine. She actually found me passed out in my room, and because I lost so much blood that my body just passed out, and she took me to the hospital. And the doctor was like, "You really need to go see an ENT doctor." Uh, ENT specialist, and I was like, well, uh, where do I go here, you know, because I'm not from Wyoming, I'm from Idaho, and they were like, well, uh, there's an ENT, but we're not sure if we can get you in there because you don't even have a general doctor. Uh, that's something that I would like to change, especially in the Hispanic community, uh, is that uh, uh, having a general doctor is pretty important, uh, especially when it comes to this kind of cases. Uh, so we were finally able to get into uh, ENT Boise, and uh, the doctor there, and he was like, hey, uh, there's something wrong with you, but we're not sure what it is. And I was just like, well, uh, it's, you know, like we need to figure out what's going on because I need to go back to my life and going to college. And, Especially because since I was a dance major, I was like, I have to be in the classroom. After I was able to get a CT scan, which uh, I got the CT scan on a Wednesday. Yeah, it was a Wednesday. And um, I got a call the afternoon later on that they saw a shadow behind my eye, my nose, inside my nose, and on this left side of my face. And in the sinuses pretty much. And then it extended back like to, to my head. Uh, he saw my MRI results and he did confirm that there was a tumor. 
in that area and they need to get surgery as soon as possible. When they told me that, I was like, well, my life is pretty much over now and um, I won't be able to go to college. I won't be able to uh, do anything. I'm gonna have to stop dancing. And it really, it really got personal, it really hurt me. Um, I was mad, I was mad at the world because why is this like 18 year old with so many dreams and so many things that he wants to do in the world, his life was coming to an end so fast. I came back to college because I was like, I'm not wasting my time. So I came back to college uh, and then uh, I got a doctor, I got a call from the doctor uh, Two weeks later, and they were like, hey, we're having surgery at the end of October. And that was in 2012, and I was like, well, I'm gonna have to leave college, because um, I have to go take care of this. Uh, so I did, I left college. I, um, all my surgeries have been in Denver, Colorado, at Portis Aventus Hospital. Uh, the first time, the first surgery, they went through my nose. So it was a really, like, very, uh, minimal surgery through my nose, so they got the tumor out of my nose. Um, they did an incision by my mouth, like inside my mouth and lower the jaw, the jaw and broke uh, the sinus bone that we have here and went through so they could get to the tumor that was in the back. So um, they did that. I have a titanium plate on the side of my face. But during that time I was like, I cannot like continue with my life. Like I have to move on. I have to, I have to look for what's what's next in my life. Cause I just got over this little uh, rock on the road to success in my life. I have to get over it. I had my three month checkup after surgery, and which was an MRI, and the doctors were like, "There's another shadow." When they told me that my world just crumbled. I didn't know how to react to it at this time because the doctors promised me that they were gonna take care of it the first time, that this tumor was gonna be gone, that it wasn't gonna, uh, I wasn't gonna come back. But it did, and uh, it came back a little bit stronger. So same thing again, you know, I had to go through the whole process of like scheduling surgery, um, not coming back to college, not being able to continue my life. However though, like I don't understand still, like the surgery was very minimal, like they only went through my nose, like I didn't have any more incisions anywhere else, but they went through my nose and my recovery time was two months. Like I could not recover from that. But the good thing out of the surgery is they were able to uh, discover or find what was my diagnosis because they couldn't figure it out. And it was actually a JNA, which is a juvenile nasal pharynx angel pyroma, uh, which is a benign tumor, but it's still pretty dangerous because it's in the head neck area. In January of 2014, I was able to come back to college and start my uh, working towards my associates. Uh, during the spring break of that semester, I had to go back for my checkup with an MRI. And uh, I had the MRI on a Wednesday again. And I got the results the next day. And uh, the doctor said again that there was a shadow. And I was just like, a third time, like, come on. Like, we went in there two times already. Like, we need to get this done with. And uh, I was really upset because I was in college, I didn't want to leave college. I just kinda, I was just mad. And like, I came back to college after that week and I was just mad and I didn't want to talk to my friends, hang out with my friends. I just wanted my life to be over, you know? Like, some suicidal thoughts that came through in my head, but I have such a strong will that I was like, no, I feel like I haven't died this past two times. I can't kill myself. So a week before surgery, I called all the doctors and I was like, you know what? We're going to reschedule everything. Uh, they were pretty mad about it because they're like, it's your health and we need to take care of this. But I was like, if something goes wrong, I will at least enjoy this year. So I've 
you know, I dance the whole year. I did summer intensives over the summer. Uh, I worked my butt off that semester. I don't remember much from this time of the surgery because um, they did went they, it was a harder surgery because they did uh, actually make more incisions. So incision goes from like the top of my head, it goes through the side, to the front of my ear, back of my ear, and then through uh, my neck. It was just really devastating because like, I was weighing, I went into surgery weighing, weighing 183 pounds, where I came out of surgery I was weighing 146. So like, I, my body just completely lost itself. Um, I was really frustrated because like, there's this, there's still this hole um, on the side of my head, which the uh, doctor said that um, they could take care of that with a small surgery, but I don't want to because I don't want to deal with any type of surgeries anymore. Um, so I was recovering for about a month. And then uh, doctors were like, we actually have to start radiation. Um, I think that was like the point, the peak of where my life was like, you're getting radiation, your life is over. Because you're not gonna recover from this. You're, gonna, you're not gonna be out of this at all. Like it's just gonna be completely not, you use, you're just pretty much it's gonna end your life with radiation because it just kills every single cell in your body. Uh, the first week was okay, second week was c completely bad, and like my whole radiation lasted six weeks. Uh, so like each week you just, cop, you just keep getting worse, you know. And I was so sick that I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't eat, I just couldn't do anything. Pretty much I was just like a body in a bed with an oxygen tank so I could breathe. That last week of radiation, I was like, you know what? Like, I need to move forward with my life and like stop being, trying to be the victim of what, of what I went through in like this past three years of my life. And I just really wanted to move forward. How has your diagnosis and the treatment process changed your perspective on life? It definitely has changed my life because, like, before I went through all this, I had my life planned out. I had what I was going to do five years and ten years. Uh, us coming from Mexico to the U.S., um, I had a lot of plans in mind. I, by the age of 22, I was, I was supposed to be an owner of a restaurant, out of a business of some sort, and uh, I'm only, I'm going to be 21, and that dream is not even close to me. To be happening and I used plants my whole life and with going through the diagnosis and the treatment the surgeries the radiation uh, the doctors telling me three times that I had to go into surgery it re I really realized that I don't have a control in my life that I just have to go with with the flow and just enjoy life like each day each minute each second that I get now it's uh, I don't I don't regret anything in life that I've done. I don't, I really don't. But now that, that going through this, it really shows me that uh, each, pers each person you meet, each uh, situation, each experience, uh, every opportunity you get uh, to make the most out of it. And um, just, having, just having that thought in my mind that I was so close of dying that the doctors told my mom that to start saying goodbye to where I'm at right now, it's it's unbelievable and we could say it's a miracle because it is a miracle that I'm here and just life life always puts little bumps on the road. And in order for us to grow, we have to go through those bumps. It has helped me to really appreciate what I do, especially with my art, which is dance. 
it really has helped me to appreciate it more and to see that uh, how important it's just like body movement is and, and just how important walking is. Like, you know, it's, it's, before this I didn't appreciate the little things, but now I do. Do you have any advice for people who may be going through the same thing or other cancer survivors? What have you learned that you might be able to share with them? Um, definitely drink 7-Up. 7-Up <laughs> was like my lifesaver through this whole thing. The glands in your mouth that create the saliva, uh, they produce over saliva, and then that saliva gets really sticky and then your mouth gets really sticky, so the 7-Up really helped. <laughs> Like, yeah, you know, like it sounds horrible when they tell you that like, you have six weeks of radiation. But don't think about the six weeks. Think about one day at a time. Also, another thing that helped me was uh, I counted up to 10 and then started again. So I just went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then started all over again. So taking like 10 seconds at a time, especially when like, I was sitting in the radiation bed, like this counting 10 seconds and taking those 10 seconds at a time, it was really helpful. But try to keep your normal, your life as normal as possible. So what helped me was I was going to school online. So that was kind of like my normal thing that I was doing. Something that my mom told me when I was going through this, that God doesn't give you anything you can't handle. And just don't give up. Like, like don't give up. still here and on earth and help other people and don't give up never give up don't give up keep fighting because you're going through it for a reason